Uh, you're talking about a top 15 defensive team in the nation, which they are. You know, we're striving to get up in that kind of the level defensively. We're working towards that, and uh, it just exemplifies our league. You know, our league is, you know, it's, it's tough. Defense wins, and uh, you know, we were able to defend a little bit better than they were this evening, and we were able to come out with a victory. And uh, so I'm excited about our guys and what we're able to do. A night where you know shots weren't really falling for either team as well, but we found a way to win. So you mentioned how tough the league is. Big, big deal then that you're one to know currently in the league in question. Uh, when, when it came out tonight, you mentioned this team is a, a, a strong defensive group. Do you feel like um, you were in a situation where the shots didn't fall or were they contesting shots more? Or where do you think that fell for your well, guys? Well, I think it's a combination. I mean, I thought we had some looks at times and that we just didn't knock down uh, looks that we've made, you know, in a number of times during the season. You know, just didn't fall tonight. And that's that's part of basketball. You still have to find a way to be successful. And I thought our guys didn't really hang their heads. You know, we've talked about defending so much. I think even though they missed some shots they maybe a little made, you know, earlier in the season, uh, they didn't put their heads down. They kept playing. They kept defending, which gave us a chance to win. And that's all you can ask for a team is, hey, you want to give an opportunity to win at the end. And we had that opportunity up by one late, and then we were able to kind of build and get some momentum to close out the last uh, three minutes. And you hold this team to 45 points. Uh, Darius just said if you're holding the team under 50, you like your chances. How would you evaluate the overall defensive effort? You know, I thought the effort was good. I thought they really followed the game plan. You know, we, we, we changed our defenses a few times. I thought our guys made the adjustments. You know, early on in the season, we would, we would make those, you know, decisions or tweak something. And our guys really couldn't put it into practice on the court. You know, couldn't do it right away. You know, now, you know, you can see our guys are gaining experience at what we want to do on the court. And they were able to make some adjustments that we did defensively, you know, in the second half. And I thought they did it seamlessly. You know, it looked like a veteran team, a team that had been together for years, even though they hadn't been together for about three or four months. You know, we were talking about defense. Looking at the stat line, I mean, obviously, you could point to steals. There was quality rebounding. But blocks jumped off the page tonight, too. Uh, it's very interesting. Obviously, there's some that, that made, uh, that'll make a highlight thing on the, on the uh, Twitter feed, for sure. But C.J. Kelly having two blocks himself. What does this say about the toughness of your group? Uh, you know what? You know, we have a good group as far as that. I think our toughness is there. I think our guys do a really good job. You know what they do? They, they, they play for each other. And so whether that's offensively or defensively, they're playing for each other. I think that's why you see us when we're moving the ball, extra passes, guys are willing to share it. And But the same thing applies defensively. When guys are getting beat, you see other guys are rotating over with a sense of urgency to try to make another play to help a teammate out. And that's what you want to see from a team is that, you know, no one's out there really playing for themselves. They're playing for the, for the overall team. And I think it shows by the extra effort defensively and it shows when, when they share the ball offensively. Coach, Hendricks had a huge block in the second half um, along with the uh, two steals uh, with uh, Darius Johnson. Do you think those are those key plays that fuel your team to victory? Do you, do you think that? Absolutely. I think those plays give you momentum. You know, you make those kind of plays. We had one stretch. Uh, I think we built a lead to around eight in the second half on back-to-back on, on -back steals. And uh, I thought our guys did a really good job of anticipating you know, the play and, and, and jumping it and, and getting into the passing lane, and that was good for us. And uh, like I said, DJ did that several times. Taylor did that several times. And now we need guys making those plays. You know, we need guys being active with that type of energy defensively. And, and Brandon Suggs, another guy I thought he gave us a huge lift as well. You didn't go to the free throw line much, 10 times, but 9 out of 10. And when you needed them most, a couple of important free throws right there in the last minute. Absolutely. I thought we closed, you know, real well at the line. I always like to look at our guys under two minutes, under two and a half minutes, how we shoot free throws. And I thought tonight we, we were exceptional. I don't think we missed any down the stretch. And uh, that's what you want to see. And uh, that's how you, you know, you win close ball games. You got to be able to knock down your free throws and take care of the ball. And I thought we did both of those things, you know, fairly well down the stretch tonight. When DJ had those uh, four turnovers towards the end of the game there, like in that last minute, did it feel more like it was an opportunity? than anything else, especially with the way you weren't getting to the line tonight? No, absolutely. I thought that you wanted, you know, he's strong, he's physical, he doesn't mind contact. And so you try to put him in a position where he can make a play like that. And, and he came through, you know, he made some good plays for us at the basket, he got fouled and now he stepped up and made the free throws. Uh, you know, I have a lot of confidence in his ability to do that. As we said earlier, you know, we, we had some looks that we didn't make, you know, during the game that some of our shooters have been making. And so, you know, you need a point guard that when that happens can kind of, you know, switch gears and become more aggressive offensively until guys can kind of find their rhythm. And I thought he did a really good job, especially in the second half. We really weren't finding our rhythm offensively. So I thought he asserted himself and, uh, and he helped us, you know, in a number of ways on the defensive end and offensive end tonight. Coach, you had uh, 15 points off the fast break. 
Um, how important is that for, for you guys, uh, you know, scoring those quick buckets, um, getting up the court fast, and getting your offensive kind of going, you know? But that's how we want to play. You know, we want to play a, you know, a high-tempo game. We want to play with pace. And so we're still trying to get there. That's one of the things we're still working towards. I still think we can run more and run faster. But it's a process for our guys. They're learning it. And uh, today was a good day for us, you know, getting 15 points, especially when you only scored 50. So almost a third of your points came in transition. And that that's bodes well for what we're trying to do as a move. You notice that intensity change with conference play? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, I've been around long enough to know how it's going to be. Uh, you know, everyone's gun, gun up. Everyone's excited for you know, an opportunity. And it's a new season for everybody. So no matter how you finish out in the preseason, everyone's back at 0-0 zero zero today. And so guys have a chance to, you know, you know, reset their season. And that's what you see happening for us and all the teams around the league. So I expect all the games to be very competitive and, and, and guys are fighting for their lives. Did you talk about that in practice leading up that conference play is a different kind of play than what they had had in non-conference play? Definitely, definitely. We, we talked about that multiple days just to have our guys understand what to expect. And uh, I thought our guys were fairly prepared for that part of it, to be quite frank. They, they looked like they, had a, they, they knew what to expect and uh, they, they came out with the right intensity. And like I said, it just became a very, very you know, defensive-minded game. You know, I don't think either team shot exceptionally well. But also, I don't think, you know, I, I thought defense played a part in some of the possessions, too. But guys were up in guys, guys were making guys do some things they didn't want to do. And that's just part of it. Of course, conference rate play being that next level, over and above that, you guys are getting thrown in the fire quick <laughs> going on the road. And see Houston third ranked overall tonight, I think I saw in the nation. Um, what kind of unique challenge does that pursue? Well, I mean, another terrific defensive team, a team that's, uh, you know, in our league, they've been probably one of the best defensive teams every single year that I've been in the conference. They've been right up towards the top. Uh, they have a lot of talent now, you know, with the guards, with their guards and with their, their bigs. Uh, you know, and they have a terrific coach. So, I mean, it's, it's a really good team, uh, well coached. And I know we're going to you know, we're gonna have to play really, really well to give ourselves an opportunity. What is it about Coach Sampson's um, signature or method that you've noticed playing against him that, that makes him unique or, or, or challenging to face? Well, I think he I think he's built a, a really good culture up there. I mean, they they've had enough success now consistently where the culture is I think is, is set now. And so the guys that they have, they, they play a certain way. They're gonna play they're gonna play really hard. They're gonna be you know tenacious on the boards. Those two things you can close your eyes and you can bet that's gonna happen no matter what else goes on in the game. Those two things will be there no matter what. And uh, he's done a great job of instilling that culture because that doesn't come naturally to guys. You have to coach that and you have to emphasize that. So you know, you can always tell, you know, what a coach emphasizes by what his team does well on the floor. And so those are things he really emphasizes and they've had a lot of success doing it. And what does your team need to do to go in there and get that upset? Well, we need to go out there and we need to play with composure. We need to be composed when we play, you know, against that team. You know, we need to make sure that, that our concentration is there, you know, from a standpoint of, you know, you're in a hostile environment, the crowd's going to be there for them. Uh, they always get a good turnout. So I think really being composed, they're going to make runs and, and we're going to make runs too. We have to understand that and that let you know their runs become so big because we lose our composure and then that takes us down you know, a you know, deeper deficit. So we need to understand the importance of just staying composed you know, and being confident. You know, I think you know, that's a big part of it. You've know, you got to be confident when you're playing anybody, whether it's you know, Houston or you know, whoever you're playing. You've got to play with a certain level of confidence. And we've been a confident team most of the season. So, you know, we want to make sure we play with confidence and we want to make sure we play with composure. How is it that uh, that road game at Mississippi, that true road game, how do you think a game like that helps prepare for what the atmosphere will be in Houston? I think it helps just because it's a true road game. So you're going out in a hostile environment and, you know, and Ole Miss is a good basketball team. So I thought it gave us, you know, a good, you know, first game of going out and, and facing good competition. And I think it's going to help us as we move forward. Uh, you know, now we get a chance to go back out for another true role game, and we'll draw on some of those experiences. We'll draw on some of the experiences from uh, the tournament in the Bahamas. We'll draw on experiences from, you know, going to Ole Miss. Our guys have been away from home before, and so we have to understand how we prepare and, and how we, you know, approach those games. Taylor was just saying how different it was at Ole Miss, that the whole crowd was against them, but he kind of let that work to his advantage. Having had that moment already, they're not going to be as awed or shocked by the environment. No, absolutely. Having seen that, you know, and having, you know, the crowd, you know, everyone's against you. It's just us in the locker room, just us, you know, on the bench for the most part, except for a few family and friends. Uh, 
you know, it's something that, you know, I, I like teams that embrace that. You know, as a player, I embraced going on the road. I, I loved it. And and I think we have some guys in the locker room that, that enjoy going on the road as well. And so we need to draw upon those guys who've had those experiences. Guys that like our older guys, like Ithiel, like C.J. Kelly, guys that have been in hostile environments, you know, through a number of years in college, I think can really help us. You know, Michael Durr has been, you know, also another older player who's been in those situations. So guys like that, we need to draw upon, you know, their experiences and, and some of the things that they share, you know, with our guys in the locker room and in practice, and they can be helped. In the spirit of drawing things, obviously you have the uh, season's experience and then how tonight went. What's something you, you, you are uh, drawing from all that that you feel like you're going to work on the next few practices before you hit the road there? Uh, we got to continue to, you know, there's some things we got to clean up defensively. Uh, you know, I thought, we, you know, we, they made seven threes against us, uh, shot a good percentage from three, you know, above average. So I know we got to be better there. Uh, that's going to be something we have to focus on. We have to focus on rebounding because, you know, Houston's one of the best rebounding teams historically in the country. So we have to make sure that we're really concentrating on, you know, our boxing out and rebounding is a big part of it. So Brandon's not here, so I got to ask New Year's resolutions? <laughs> New Year's resolutions. Any? Uh, you know, you know, new, no, I don't really have any New Year's resolutions except I want to see us to be successful in the new year. I want to see my team and us, you know, have a great season and, uh, you know, and we're, and we're working towards that. You know, you mentioned earlier that you've only been together about four months. Early in the season, you had that, that defensive week game, and you emphasized that. How do you feel you are right now going into conference play? Do you feel like you're ahead of the pace? Do you feel like they're getting that rhythm going and a groove? I think they are. I think they are. I think they are. You know, I don't. I wouldn't say we're ahead of pace because because I don't I don't think we are, but I do think we're they're starting to understand what what I want as the coach. They're understanding what I want from the standpoint of how I want to defend, you know, how we want to run our offense. I think they're they're getting an understanding of that. Early on, they didn't have a clue. I mean, there were so many new pieces running around. We we had four starters out in our first game. I mean, it was it was incredible trying to figure all that out and work through that and work out work guys back in. And that led to us having a, a situation of our rotations. And then we're starting to finally get our rotations set, which is good. That gives the guys some continuity, too, on the court because they know kind of pretty much when they may get in and, you know, you know they kind of know their roles a little bit better from the standpoint of our rotations are becoming more set now. We're in conference play. I think that's helping our guys, too, get more comfortable. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thanks, Coach.